Hello, future eighth graders. Great to see you. This is Miss Whitman. I am one of your teachers for our summer enrichment class, along with, with Mrs. Tosh, who hopefully most of you have met. If you haven't met us yet, we're excited to meet you and be your teachers for this summer course. Um, I wanted to make a little video because I know some of you may have missed the first session, and I wanted to just fill you in on what we're doing with this unit and also just how this course is going to work. Also, I should apologize, my hair is really wet because I just went water skiing. Um, pretty cool, but I'm a mess now, so forgive me. Um, but so I'm starting here showing you the Google Classroom page for incoming grade eight students. So it's called Summer ELA 8. You'll see the class code is posted right here. Um, and also here's the link to our Google Meet. Anytime that we have a live meeting, optional or um, required, this is where you would go to this Google Meet link, okay? So um, in terms of required attendance, you are expected to show up for our, um, our session every Monday for the next seven weeks. This past Tuesday was the first session. There'll be seven more live sessions that are required. Those are always on Mondays. And for your class, uh, for the ELA 8 students, it'll be from 10 to 11 a.m. So from 10 to 11 a.m. on Mondays, you want to make sure you are in that Google Meet ready to go because we're going to be doing live lessons. Um, on Wednesdays, we'll have optional office hours. As I said, they're optional, but we are, we are happy to welcome you if you have any questions. And that'll be from the same times from 10 to 11 a.m., but it'll be on Wednesdays if you see. So that's a great time to come and ask any questions you might have about the assignments we're posting. Um, in terms of assignments themselves, you'll have three things that you need to complete each week in addition to our direct instruction. So basically on Monday, we'll do a lesson. We'll show you something, demonstrate something. You might submit something at the end of it. And then on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of each week, you'll have an assignment posted for you to submit. Those assignments should be submitted on the days that they're due. So basically something will be posted for you. Um, typically I'll post the night before. So if we have a live lesson on Monday, on Monday evening, I'll post your assignment for Tuesday. And then you'll have till the end of the day Tuesday to submit it. This is a summer enrichment course. It's meant to help you grow in areas where we think that our students could use some strengthening. It's not meant to be this punitive, scary grade situation. So um, it's really important that you do the work and it's really, um, going to help you to grow, but it's not something where we're going to give you an A or a D or an F necessarily. Um, it's more about us giving you lots and lots of feedback to help you improve. So you're not going to see a lot of, you know, you get 100 on this or you get a 62. It's going to be more like um, just written feedback with explanations of how you, what you did well and how you can grow. So um, just keep that in mind. So this past Tuesday, we had our first live lesson and we talked about the theme of this first two weeks. So we're working in four two-week sessions for a total of eight weeks. And the focus for you guys for this first session is summarizing. And it might seem to you like summarizing, that's the thing I do when I'm in first grade. But the truth is summarizing is one of the most difficult skills that you really want to master. And it's something that middle schoolers tend to struggle with because it's really hard for them, for you guys at this age, to prioritize information, to read a text and decide these are the most important items that I need to mention if I'm summarizing this text. So this is something we want to get really good at because it's going to be something you're asked to do again and again, not just in middle school, but in high school, in college, and in lots of other ways. Even if you're talking to your friends and they say, what's that movie about? Tell me. Or tell me about the book you're reading. You want to be able to give them a short, concise, but informative summary that explains what it's about. So on Tuesday, we used a specific text. So um, all of you have been logged into Commonlit with our Google Classroom. So we've synced them. So if you have this Google Classroom, then you also have a Commonlit account that's connected to this Google Classroom. So when you go to Commonlit, you'll go to the main page, you'll click log in, and then you will um, what am I gonna do? Oh, here we go. You will um, log in using Google. You'll use your school Google account to log in. And automatically you'll see that there are assignments posted for you there that Mrs. Tosh and I have entered. So if I go into your class, I'll show you the assignment that we looked at on Monday. Um, we read a, a text, it was a nonfiction text, and it was called, What Zoos Do? Um, what Zoos Do? So we're gonna go here real quick, um, and we're gonna open that text up, and you should all have access to this as well. So, um, sorry, real quick. Uh, I need to find completed. What zoos do? Okay, so what do zoos do by Amy Miller? And so we're going to use this text as a means of practicing the skill of summarizing. Now we have another tool that we've provided for you to help you with summarizing as well. And what it's called is it's called 
the tamio structure or the ta a neo however you want to call it um, but it's just basically a helpful acronym that you'll use to um, design your summaries to organize your summaries a little bit so I'm going to open that up right now. You all have a copy of this Tamio organizer in your Google Classroom. It's posted there for you. It's called Summarizing Tamio Structure Organizer. So each one of you has one of those to work with. So on Tuesday, we basically read through this text and we annotated it. And then we went ahead and created a summary over here. And that's what we're going to be asking you to do repeatedly over this two week period because we want you to get really good at writing summaries of all kinds. So you're going to be watching films, listening to things, reading articles, and then summarizing them until you get really good at it. So let's take a look at this text. It's called What Do Zoos Do by Amy Miller. And one thing that's pretty cool about Common Lit um, that you hopefully know about is that you can annotate your text as you're reading. And that's a really good thing to be doing, especially as we're planning on the summary. You want to really note what are the most important things and at least highlight them, maybe put some notes in the margins. So to annotate in Commonlet, basically you just highlight what's important to you and then you'll get this little pop-up menu and it'll let you either choose the highlighter and choose a color or you can choose this text box and you can add text. So that's something you want to get really familiar with doing and comfortable with doing. It's a really great way to practice um, noticing what matters in a text. So let's start reading. It starts with What Do Zoos Do by Amy Miller. It says, Zoos in the United States, I'm going to make it a little bigger, have changed a lot over the years. Today, zoos are not only for entertainment, but for education and action when it comes to saving species that are at risk of, risk of extinction. As you read, take notes on how zoos are contributing to preserving wildlife. So this is honestly not part of the article. It's just a blurb introducing it. But if I'm writing a summary, I want to pay really close attention to that blurb because it often is doing some of the work for me. When I look here, it looks like it's telling me that zoos are for more than entertainment. They also do things involving education and action with helping to save a species in danger of extinction. That's, that's really valuable information that's probably going to be the focus of my article. So I want to really think about that and see if there's anything in there that I can enter into my organizer. So I'm going to go over to my organizer. And already I know the type of text here. Usually I can look at the end of the article and it'll tell me where the text comes from. So if I scroll down here, it says, this comes from What Do Zoos Do? published in Scholastic News. So it's a news article from 2013. So I'm going to go into my organizer. I'm going to type news article right here. And then I'm going to put the author. Name is Amy Miller. And then action here is basically just the verb for what the article is doing. And I'm not sure if I'm comfortable uh, using, doing this yet because I'm not sure what the author's doing in this text. We have to read it. But an action might be something like the author describes or the author illustrates, the author explains, the author teaches, the author argues. So all those are different actions that a text might take. So what's cool about these three boxes is that when you put them together, you basically have the first sentence of any summary paragraph. So you would say in the news article, what do zoos do by author Amy Miller, the author explains blank, and then you can put the main idea in there. So this basically is creating your opening for you. I also, of course, want to put your name at the top. At least that's neat. Um, so that is going to really help you to kind of streamline your opening paragraph of your summary. So let's go back to our article. Let's see if we can find out some more information. Notice that we should probably look at this organizer real quick. So we have our main idea. We have our important key details. And then this says organization. And basically what that means is you're just thinking about how is the text Put together? How does the author structure the information so that it makes sense? And usually when you're writing a summary, your summary should follow the structure of the text. So you're going to use transition words, for example, things like at the beginning of the article, later on in the text, eventually the author concludes, by the end of the article. So you're going to be using those transitions that kind of show how the writing progresses and how it's ordered because the author hopefully put some thought into that and put the information in an order on purpose. All right, and then at the bottom is where you'll actually do a full summary paragraph in your own words. So let's go back to our article and see what we can find out about what zoos do. So let's see, it says, chimpanzees swing from trees at the Lincoln Park Zoo in Chicago. Cheetahs paste a map of the National Zoo in Washington, D.C. Giant pandas eat pounds and pounds of bamboo shoots at the San Diego Zoo. All these animals have one thing in common. They are all in danger of disappearing in their natural habitat, and zoos are trying to help save them. Okay, so if I'm thinking summary, all these things in this first paragraph are really cool, and you can they're kind of giving you this picture of what 
animals are doing in the zoo, but none of them is really something I would want to include in my summary. But this next paragraph, that's a jackpot situation because it says, all these animals are in danger of disappearing and zoos are trying to help save them. So this is something kind of that connects all the items in the previous paragraph. It's something that more makes sense to go in a summary. So I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to put a little note to myself and I'm going to put zoos work to save endangered species. And honestly, I didn't know that. I kind of thought zoos were just there for me to look at giraffes. So that's kind of cool. Also, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but sometimes when I'm trying to take a note in my annotations, it closes on me and it's very annoying. So I'm going to have to start copying and pasting. Zoos are, zoos help to save endangered species from extinction. I'm going to copy and paste it just in case. Copy and done. Why? Okay. Sorry that you have to all witness my technological fails in this video, but um, but you do. I did it. Yay. Okay. So let's keep going. Now we have our first little fact. Zoos help save endangered species from extinction. Zoos across the country are changing these days. They aren't just places to see wild animals in cages anymore. Zoos are working harder than ever to save endangered animals across, around the world. So this is all kind of supporting what we just said here. So I'm going to hold on and continue. Sometimes zoos' efforts take scientists around the world. For example, the Wildlife Conservation Society, WCS, which is headquartered at the Bronx Zoo in New York City, is working with local officials in Malaysia to stop people from hunting exotic birds to sell their feathers. All right, that's cool, and that's something new. So first of all, I'm seeing that sometimes there are conservation groups that actually are headquartered in a zoo. And then also, it sounds like there's a lot of worldwide communications going on. So I'm going to highlight this here. Um, if Common Lip will let me, let me highlight Common Lip. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I'm going to highlight this, and then I'm going to put a little note and say, um, let's see, zoos work, or zoos promote communication. I'll say, and I'm trying, notice how I'm trying to put it in my own words, because if I'm just copying and pasting what the article says, that's going to make a lot more work for me later. So if right now I start paraphrasing, then that gives me, um, it's much easier for me later on when I'm writing my summary because it's already in my own words. So zoos promote communication um, between scientists and um, I'll say national hmm, scientists and national leaders to promote conservation of animals, something like that. Um, it's going to delete on me. That would be lame. Done. Ah, it did. Good thing I copied and pasted it. I'm so sorry you all have to witness this. I know you're probably like, Miss Whitman, stop talking. Let us see your instructions. Okay, there we go. We have to learn to live in harmony with the animals around us and how to think a little bit more before we do certain things, said Sarah S. Marinello of the WCS. The San Diego Zoo just opened the Conservation and Research for Endangered Species Center. The $22 million center gives scientists cutting edge instruments and plenty of room to do their work. Okay, that's pretty big because now I see that we have, earlier they mentioned the WCS, which was based in the Bronx Zoo. So that was the Wildlife Conservation Society. And now down here we have the Conservation and Research for Endangered Species Center, which is a $22 million center. So another thing that it looks like zoos do from my perspective is that it looks like they're using their money to support animal conservation efforts um, and to support research. So zoos support research, or I'll say support and fund research on animal um, on animal conservation and care, which is something like that. Um, and that's also something that I didn't know that zoos did. Why are you deleting my thing? You are the worst. Um, okay, hold on. We can do this. I can do this. I can do it. That's a TikTok song. I can do it, but I'm only human. Okay, got it. Okay. The California Zoo is famous for its work helping to save China's giant panda. Three panda cubs have been born at the zoo already. The San Diego Zoo now has the largest population of giant pandas outside mainland China. 
Now, I don't know about you, I'm not a huge animal person, but there's nothing like a cute little panda. So I might be reading this and thinking in my head, oh, pandas, I'm totally going to annotate that. It's so important because I love pandas. But just because you love pandas and think they're adorable doesn't mean that's the most important crux of the article. So while that's good to know, it's interesting, it's a cool fact in the article, I'm not going to highlight it because it's not part of an overall summary that I'd want to include. But the zoo has many other projects few people hear about. Scientists with the zoo are working to save iguanas in the Turks and Caicos Island in the North Atlantic Ocean. They study African wild dogs in Zambia and forest birds in Hawaii. Farmers in Africa think the spotted cheetah is an annoying pest, so they trap and kill them. Didn't know that. Now cheetahs are in danger of disappearing forever. The National Zoo in Washington, D.C. is trying to change that through the Cheetah Conservation Fund in Namibia, Africa. Scientists there are showing farmers that they don't have to kill cheetahs to keep them off their farms. Scientists at the Houston Zoo are working with people in Venezuela to save the tapir, 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 I know I messed this up in, on Tuesday too, the taper, I think it's, we're going to say the taper, an animal related to the rhinoceros that looks a lot like a pig, but it's hunted for its thick hides and it's losing its habitat in South American forests to development. So it's losing its habitat in South America. Okay, so I guess that means that the place where it lives is being overly developed. So people are cutting down trees and then the tapir is losing its natural habitat. So what's interesting about this part, especially that part about the cheetahs, how it sounds like locals think that if cheetahs are annoying, they just have to trap and kill them. But it sounds like there's other ways to deal with the cheetahs without actually killing them. So it sounds to me like zoos are also not just promoting research, they're promoting education about animal welfare. So I'm going to highlight this. Um, and Pepto Bismol pink there. And then I'm going to write zoos promote education about animal welfare and conservation. And that's huge because it sounds like people don't know some basic things that would keep animals alive that otherwise wouldn't. Why do you think that you are the worst? Um, I am sorry that my computer is up the pits. Okay, here we go. We are part of the web of life, said Marinello. We forget that sometimes, but we are animals and our earth is supporting us and it's all connected. It's a balancing act and we need to think about how we can sustain the planet to take care of us and all the plants and animals that are on it. That's a great quote. So it sounds like they're kind of, and, and notice too that a lot of times when we're summarizing, the first and the last paragraph are really key because the writer is probably trying to start off and then sum up their information. And so use that because if you're trying to sum up what they said, they're probably doing a little bit of the work for you in the opening and closing paragraphs. So we highlight this and we'll say something about how, um, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Okay. So we'd say something like zoos remind us that we are all part of the circle of life and must take care of each other. Please work. No, of course not. Um, this time works like a charm. Boop, yay, okay. So now we've got a nice little bit of annotating done on this article. And when you go back to it later on, you can go back and see your notes and not have to reread the whole thing a million times. So let's go back to our Tamio organizer here. So we've got our news article, we've got our author, Amy Miller, and our action. How would we say she's doing? I would say, let's see, I don't think she's necessarily arguing. It doesn't seem like she's a passionate argument. It's more like I think she's um, teaching us or informing us. So let's go with informed. And then we'll have our main idea here. And I think the main idea, from what my notes are saying, it sounds like we're saying that zoos do a lot more than just show us cute little animals. So zoos are involved in more than just entertainment. Maybe something like that. Or it could be zoos are involved in um, zoos do more for animal welfare than we realize. Maybe that could be a main idea. Because I think those are those things kind of like sum up everything the article said. Then we come down here to important or key details. And I'm going to go back to my annotations and see what I wrote. So, um, oh my goodness, where are my annotations? That would be tragic. Oh, they're still there. Whew, okay. So we have zoos help to save endangered species from extinction. So I'll put zoos help save endangered species 
from extinction. And you don't have to necessarily do this part in complete sentences. You're just trying to get your annotations down. Promote communication between, okay, so um, promote worldwide communication about animal, well, animal health, welfare, sure. Um, what else did we say? Let's see, they, oh, they fund research. And I think we also said, oh yeah, they promote education. Promote education about animal welfare. And we said something about we're all connected. Circle of life. We are all connected. And we have to take care of each other. And I hope you're noticing that I'm trying not to do too much copying and pasting and to try and rely on putting the things that I wrote into my own words as much as possible. Remember, you never want your summary to be plagiarized. Obviously, that's intellectual theft and it's illegal. So you really want to think about how can I put this concept into my own words? I'm not trying to change the meaning of what the author's saying, but I'm trying to put it in my own words. So down here under organization is where you might just kind of detail, like, how does the author structure their piece? So in this case, I think the author kind of goes back and forth between some specific examples like of the cheetahs, the pandas, of um, kind of starts with like images of how we think of. So it kind of starts off, I would say, with like what we traditionally think of as a zoo. So we could start with like a um, like something like starts with images that we typically associate with zoos. But then it goes into explains that zoos do a lot more. And then it goes into some specific things that zoos do. So gives examples of specific things zoos do. And that's where we add in the things we just listed before. So communication, funding, conservation, education all the shins. Um, okay, so now that we have kind of taken our annotations and put them into this organizer, you're ready to actually go ahead and write your summary. And like I told you before, your first sentence should be pretty easy as long as you filled in these first three boxes because it's right here for us. Um, there should be probably a little box for title, something I would add in if it was me doing it, which it is, so I can add that in. So I'll say in the news article, what do zoos do? Oops. Who by Amy Miller? The author, and I think we use the word informs the reader about, I'll say, zoos are involved in more than just inner, okay, about all the functions of zoos beyond simple entertainment. Okay, so that kind of starts us off with a nice little opening. In the news article, What Do Zoos Do by Amy Miller, the author informs the reader about all the functions of zoos beyond simple entertainment. And then I'm going to think about how the author does it. So I'll say the author begins with some typical images of a zoo and then explains that zoos actually do many other important things. I hate the word things, we can't use that. Um, zoos actually have many other important roles. This things and stuff, not good in your formal writing. For example, zoos are involved in, and then I can go up to my list of things that zoos do, involved in, um, the protection of endangered species, the funding of research, I think. Oh, and worldwide, promote worldwide communication. Okay, so um, these are involved in the protection of endangered species, um, the promotion of communication. Oh, that sounds so too wordy. So, for example, zoos are involved in the protection of endangered species, um, the funding of research to promote animal conservation, and the actual education 
No, that's not the end. Education of others about animal welfare. All right. So far, I feel pretty good about this. So then I could say, um, by the end of the article, the author has shown, or we'll say at, at the end of the article, the author reminds the reader that humans and animals, I can spell words, are all connected in the circle of life. I won't do that though. Are all connected to each other and that we must care for each other. All right, I feel pretty good about this summary. It's a little bit of a ginormous font. So I'm gonna make it a little smaller so we can read it together. Um, and of course, I also wanna change my alignment to left and it's still a really big font. So let's make it 14. Okay, there we go. So now we have a summary that looks pretty thorough. Um, so indent it a little. So in the news article, What Do Zoos Do? by Amy Miller, the author informs the reader about all the functions of zoos beyond simple entertainment. The author begins with some typical images of a zoo and then explains that zoos actually have many other important roles. For example, zoos are involved in the protection of endangered species, the funding of research to promote animal conservation, and education of others about animal welfare. At the end of the article, the author reminds the reader that humans and animals are all connected to each other and that we must care for each other. I feel like that's a pretty strong summary. So I captured the important details of the, the important major facts, I should say, of the text without having to worry about all the smaller, more minute details that don't necessarily matter in a summary. So hopefully this example has kind of given you a sense of how to use the structure organizer and how to do a good summary, because that's going to be what we focus on for the next few weeks, a um, couple weeks, I should say. Uh, the one other thing we did during our direct instruction day that if you haven't done, it would be great for you to do it ASAP, is um, we I shared with you on Google Classroom a short survey. And by short, I mean literally one question. It will take you 20 seconds to do. So it says summarizing self-assessment. And if you're looking at your Google Classroom and you're like, wow, that's a lot of stuff, it can help sometimes to click on the Classwork tab and then see everything a little bit more organized. So you'll see down here it says summarizing self-assessment. If you click that, it'll take you to a little one-question quiz um, it's not even a quiz, it's a survey, and you will just assess your current knowledge of summarizing. So not having really done anything beyond this one lesson, do a, do a quick uh, little review and reflection and think about how you would, you would uh, classify yourself in terms of what you know about summarizing. So it says check one box for how you feel about your knowledge of summarizing a text. So you're going to choose somewhere between either I don't know anything about it or I know very little, all the way up to I have an exceptional understanding and I can teach others about it. So this is not, again, for a grade. It's just for us to measure growth over the two weeks. So at the end of the two weeks, we'll ask you to fill this out again and see if there's been growth in your understanding of this topic. So make sure you're honest with yourself um, about what you know right now. And uh, there's no judgment. Whatever you check is fine. And if you could just do that, that would be great. And then um, you'll begin working on the assignments that are posted each day of the next two weeks. And this is how this course will work for the rest of the eight weeks of the summer. So each two weeks, we'll do something like this. You'll have a lesson. You'll take a survey on what you know. Then you'll have two weeks worth of assignments. And at the end, we'll assess how much you've grown. All right. So hopefully this helps. I'm really excited to work with you guys. I think that you're going to really be ahead of the game in terms of um, your knowledge and awareness of these concepts when you come into school in September. So this is a really good thing to be doing to be practicing those skills. If you need any help with anything, Ms. Tosh and I will be free for office hours, but we also are both easily accessible via email. And I know, um, I don't know how much Ms. Tosh uses it, but I might, I might have to give her a lesson. But um, consider using Google Chat as well. That's a really easy way to reach out to us. Just send me a chat on Hangouts and let me know you're confused about something and we'll happily help. All right, make sure you're getting your work done. Make sure you're asking if you need help and have a fabulous day. I'm really excited to get to hang out with you guys a little bit this summer. All right, talk to you soon.